President. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this first hearing at the 182nd period of sessions. I would like to welcome everyone, the representatives from the civil society. Please, could you please try to mute your microphones? I would like to welcome the civil society organizations and the um, representatives of the indigenous peoples and the representatives of the state. These uh, hearings aim at addressing the um, situation, human rights situation of indigenous peoples at the Peruvian Amazon. Apart from the civil society and the state, we also have Mr. Jan Jarav, representative of the Office of the High Commissioner um, for the UN, uh, from the UN for Latin America, for South America. I am joined by the country rapporteur, Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, Commissioner Arosemena de Coutinho, who is also a rapporteur for the rights of children and adolescents, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, the, uh, can, the rapporteur for human rights defenders, and the special rapporteur of ESEUR rights, and Soledad Garcia Buñoz, and the rest of the executive secretariat who make it possible for us to meet both in person and virtually. I would like to thank also the entire team and the interpreters who are always joining us and everyone who makes it possible for us to hold these hearings. I'm Antonia Urrejola, the president of the commission and also the rapporteur for indigenous peoples. I am very happy to see you all. Since uh, this hearing, there are several participants. Let me tell you how we're going to organize it. First of all, the representatives of the civil society, the petitioners will speak for 20 minutes to um, speak on the issue. Then the Peruvian state will be able to provide the corresponding information for another 20 minutes. After that, Mr. Jan Jarab from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights will speak for seven minutes. Then the commission and its secretariat will have um, 20 minutes for questions and comments, and then I will give the floor again to the ten petitioners and the state for 10 minutes each. And with that, we will wrap up the event. On your screens, you'll be able to see, and please try to look for it before you see the floor. There's a little, uh, before you start speaking, sorry. Um, there's a little timer. If you cannot see it, please let me know because there's a little clock that once you start speaking, the uh, timer will uh, tell us how, for how long you've been speaking. I'll be paying attention to it. And if I have to, I will have to interrupt you. I hope that's not the case, but I will let you know once your time is up. I would like to ask everyone that to um, turn your microphones off while you're not speaking, so you won't interfere with those who are. We are broadcasting this hearing on Facebook and other social networks, and we hope to reach more people. Welcome everyone. And now I will give the floor to the uh, organizations from indigenous peoples and the civil society. I don't know if you could hear me. The idea is for the petitioners to speak. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Honorable Inter-American Commission, representatives of the Peruvian state and the audience here with us. My name is Teresita Dazu from the Yanesha people. I am a member of the board of IDESEP which represents nine indigenous organizations, 1,809 indigenous communities, 
and over 50 originary peoples in the Peruvian rainforest. We would like to uh, report the great risk our peoples are at at, because of the increased pressure on our land. I'm talking about extractive activities, infrastructure projects uh, that were boosted without any sort of consultation or um, uh, this dialogue with us. Since the beginning of, of the pandemic, 15 of our siblings have been murdered. We have filed reports, but there have been no effective actions on behalf of the state. They continue to kill us. They don't. Uh, the responsibles are not uh, identified nor sanctioned. They're not, there's no sort of reparations. And of course, this is all closely related. I and mean, if the state does not adopt measures to protect our land, respecting consultation and consent, integrating us and giving us legal security over them, if they're going to just keep on imposing their projects, not only will they keep on murdering our brothers and sisters, but also indigenous peoples will disappear. We will be left without any land. We would like to ask the state to adopt actions to cease with the historic violence we have suffered. This accumulated impact, uh, sorry, violence has an interrelation, uh, intergenerational impact. Now, um, other organizations will talk about the risks, threats, and problems we've been facing. Julio Kosovice, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. I would like to greet you all from Fenemama de Dios in Peru which is part of uh, IDESET, of COICA, but we're also part of the UCN and part of the TICA consortium. We will be talking about the situation and the emergency, the health emergency in Madre de Dios and the how serious this problem is, the impact of mining on Madre de Dios and the risks entailed by it uh, for women, men and children in those communities. So I think this is a very um, complicated situation, especially because authorities have not shown any determination to face the issue. I think we should consider our demands to ensure participation, to strengthen the, capaci the capabilities of indigenous populations in the, on this issue, uh, raising awareness. It's very important for the organizations because we are trying to do our job, but I don't think the state is considering our contribution and of course, food security in our land, how, we help to protect and make a contribution, especially during the pandemic, uh, because this demand needs to be addressed with an intercultural approach. A diagnosis needs to be uh, made of the problem. And I think it's important to see it from a scientific point of view, and through the different organizations, we're always trying to urge the government to take action. Now, these communities are, we are highly vulnerable because pollution affects um, what we eat, which is uh, fish and barley. And water, water is not just good for mining. Water is super important for indigenous peoples. We drink it, we use it for transportation. That's where we catch our fish and it's the base of our diet. So we think that for us, commissioners and Peruvian government, um, the government needs to adapt strategies that address these issues. We believe that we are making a contribution with our forests, with uh, climate change, but we don't hear an answer from the state. 
I would like to urge the Peruvian government to finally do something for the health of our indigenous peoples. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Milton Sakirai Pisuri, president of Narun, member of the National Platform for Peoples Affected by Metals and Other Toxic Chemicals. I'm in representation of the 21 communities affected by oil spillages that took place in 2016 in Morona, in the Loreto region. And through you, commissioners, we request three very important, uh, we have three important requests. We need a water inventory of the bases, sub bases, and rivers. Two, we need an inventory that characterizes the water quality and its quantity and the volume that would be fit for the population. And number three, unifying criteria on the categories of the use of water between the Ministry for Health and the National Water Authority. Because these communities have been affected by the pollution that took place back then. And ever since we haven't had good clean water and that is very useful for us. We would like to ask commissioners to consider the rights of our peoples. In Peru, in this region of Peru. I would also like to take this opportunity Uh, to ask that all our communities have safe water for human consumption. And that is why many of our children suffer from many disease, diseases. We don't have a good health uh, center. We don't have a good hospital to address immediate emergencies that come up in our towns. And on, in terms of, of education, we don't have an adequate education And that is part of why, and in part because we don't have uh, good health conditions. That is all. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Walter Eusebio Cunyachi Taihin. I'm from the Masa district in Bagua in the Amazonas department. I'm the leader of four communities. In, in 2016, in January, there was a, an oil spillage in the Imasa district. And so far, we don't know if in Rio Chiriaco, if we can eat the fish in the region. That's what we want to know. Is it safe to eat them? And we have these requests. We would like to ask the government to send us specialists to our area. We need to know if we can eat if we can drink the water from the river, if we can eat the fish from the river, because Chiriaco River is our market. So we would like to ask, please, an urgent visit by experts, because there are several communities, but we have, we have all been affected by this, and we don't know the result. And this is, we don't, we would like to know if this is affecting us. That's our request, please. We hope you understand. We also need drinking water because some communities drink the water and we don't really know if it's safe water, if it's clean water. 
We need to know, please. And this is what I would like to report. As an Awahul, we, we continue to see oil in the region. Thank you very much. Hi, good morning. My name is Berlin Dikes. I am the president of Eceptu Kayali, one of the organizations, the regional organizations within uh, the organic structure. First of all, we would like to uh, make a demand to the uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights and the government of the Peruvian state because of the many problems our region is facing. As my partner said, we are at an emergency right now in the Amazon. But I would like to say something in particular in this hearing, because we would, the Ucayali region and the other regions in the Amazon, we would like to ask for the annulment or the cancellation of the Amazonian waterway project, because as we know, it is um, complicating the situation of all of our communities. And also the studies generated by this project say, speak of the serious impact that will occur in the future as indigenous organizations who uh, inhabit this land, we face continuous threats. We have faced the devastation of the pandemic, but also an increase in drug trafficking in our country. And we can't continue to think that the Peruvian, we, sorry, we cannot um, believe that the Peruvian government feels that this is a project of public interest. They will leave nothing. We have been urging the state to cancel this agreement. Thank you. I will give the floor to Arthur. Dear Commissioners, I'm Arthur Francis Cruz Ochoa, head of Centro Aranal, which is part of the indigenous people Poro Ibue. In these minutes, I would like to focus on the threats I have been receiving, just as many of my brothers and sisters, by uh, foreigners who deal in illicit activities. And the presence of these persons has been favored by the regional government of Loreto, which has granted deeds of, that benefit these people, even when they know that these lands be, belong to my community. And also there's a state initiative to build a national road that would cross the land of my community. And even though the Ministry for Transportation and Communication states that it hasn't been built yet, we have seen that it has, uh, that there will, there would be a part of it that would divide into my community. And we have seen much machines in the region. And that is shown in the report we have presented for this hearing. This decision has brought more invaders who want to take our land and also it's been fostered without consulting our community even though the supreme court of peru stated that there's an obligation for prior consultation in infrastructure projects we have been denouncing this situation for years we have even presented reports 
at the um, environment prosecution, but they have always said that they don't have the staff or the resources to investigate this. The police say the same thing as well, and they don't do their job, even though our community is only 30 minutes away from their port. So the case I am reporting shows the risk and the threat that we suffer and this may come from illicit activity, but also from the activities of the state that affect our lives. And that is what I would like to urge the state to go to my community, to come to us, to see what's going on and for it to articulate concrete action to ensure our rights. Now I will give the floor to Flam Hamis. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners of the Inter-American Commission and state representatives. I am Hamis Perez Pacaya, president of the indigenous organization of Bajo Punawa in the uh, Punawa district. In this opportunity, I want to greet you all. And at the same time, I would like to say the following. We have been struggling since 2018 due to the abandonment of the state, especially what my brothers have mentioned uh, before the abuse, the lack of consultation by the state and private companies. For example, we started struggling. When we realized that in 2012, there was 800,000 hectares of uh, goods in our area that were uh, granted to private uh, for private actions and our our communities were in those territories and also there was an oil company exploiting the area we starting struggling for our rights in 2020 in august we witnessed several events. As a result of that struggle in 8, 9 August this uh, 2020, in the Indigenous Peoples International Day, there were three brothers dead and many wounded. We have presented several complaints before the public ministry and one year and four months have passed since these complaints were presented and they have not made any progress. They haven't even started the pre-trial investigation. Taking this into account, lack of action of the public ministry, we have filed a complaint before the Inter-American Court trying to find justice, to seek justice. We are tired. Our state, unfortunately, has abandoned us in every sense of the word because the state has the habit of violating its own legislation. We have filed complaints uh, because we feel that the state is violating our rights, the rights of the communities in Peru. That's why we need to find the persons responsible of this event. We have been accused and they have said that we were carrying guns. And if I'm not mistaken, in March 20th, they have given videos from the, the office of the prosecutor and they were trying to distort the events. They said that we were carrying guns and that is not true. Also, the corpses were uh, taken without the presence of the press prosecutor. They were transferred to Requena saying that they were uh, wounded by, they died after. 
eh, encontrar justicia a través de la afterwards. We need to find justice through the Inter-American Court. Thank you. I will now give the floor to Jorge Perez. Good morning to all the members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. What my brothers from the indigenous communities, the leaders have said, expresses the situation indigenous communities live in Peru, violation of human rights, impunity, lack of specific responses from the state, all our requests. That's why we resort to these commissions so that they can urge the Peruvian state on five important points that have been summed up as this. Adopt actions so that they can deal with the demands of the communities affected by oil activities. The demands have already been in the hands of the government for more than five years. They are well described. We are demanding political will. Now, the lands of um, the territory number 55, the, several women and children are exposed without any protection from the state. To establish effective measures to investigate and punish police agents and judges involved in the dead of these three members of the Pukama um, community who during a peaceful protest were killed so that we can find justice and identify responsible persons in order to compensate orphans, mothers who have to support these children until, until they grow up. We want the construction of the road to be interrupted The connection of the speaker. Uh, the speaker has some problem. It seems that the representative is uh, without internet connection, but we are out of time. So we will conclude now the participation of the civil society. I will give the floor to the state. Afterward, the civil society will have the floor once more so that they can mention the requests. I will now give the floor to the state representatives. If you want, I, I didn't want to interrupt the civil society organizations. You have used three more minutes. So now the state has the floor. If you want to speak for three more minutes, you can do that. And the civil society, we have some time to conclude their a presentation now it's very hard when there are so many organizations to divide and use uh, time these hearings are like this and you can send any further information by email as well i will now give the floor to the estate and afterwards to the organizations good morning thank you honorable commissioners and petitioners of this request I am Gonzalo Guillen. I am part of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Peruvian state. We want to express that we are deeply sorry because of your loss. We received news. Lucio Pasquale Manga has died uh, several um, weeks ago and also the news regarding the disappearance of several citizens in that region. We are sorry of the fact that because, because they are human rights defenders, they have suffered threats and harassment. That's why we value this opportunity to 
promote dialogue and identify pending um, challenges. I would like to say that there, there is a willingness from the state to protect and promote the work carried out by human rights defenders. I would like to introduce of the officials that are going to participate in this audience. Guillermo Julio Vargas Caramillo, Minister of Human Rights and Access to Justice, Rosilda Anulda Maraes, Vice uh, Ministry of the Ministry of Culture, Mariano Castro Sanchez Moreno, Vice Minister of Environment uh, Management of the Ministry of Environment, Sebastian, President of the uh, Council, Harold Forsyth, Representative before the EOAS, Edgardo Rodriguez Gomez, General Director of Human Rights of the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights, Daniel Jarez Espinosa, Prosecutor Coordinator of uh, Criminal Pro uh, Office of the Prosecutor, and in charge of the uh, terrorist attacks and culture. And I will now give the floor to the Vice Minister in the Ministry regarding access to justice. Good morning. As he has been informed in other hearings, the Human Rights Plan has considered indigenous community as a group that requires a special protection in order to develop policies so that they can carry out their activities free from risk. We have a protocol to guarantee the protection of human rights defenders in April 2019. And in April 2021, we created an intersectoral mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders and to guarantee uh, access to justice for human rights defenders through the joint effort of Ministry of Justice and Human Rights, Ministry of Interior, Culture, Environment, agrarian development, women and vulnerable populations, and foreign affairs. Seven months after its approval, we have made great steps in its implementation. We have fostered protection measures to mitigate risks faced by indigenous defenders, such as the disappearance of, um, of leaders in San Martin and two police interventions in Flor du Cayali in Ucayali department. In both cases, in coordination with national police and the support of indigenous communities, we carried out dissemination and training um, programs through nine training activities for in leaders and members of the police in Peru. We created a register for situations of human rights defenders that has allowed us to gather information of 136 defenders and their relatives who have suffered threats, harassments, and other risks. And we have identified that the Ucayali has the higher number, highest number of attacks to human rights defender by actors related to illegal activities. In order to support uh, Ucayali defenders, uh, different officials have visited um, Ucayali this year in May to develop an early alert network for the protection of indigenous um, defenders. And in November, in Sichiroca community, and together with vice ministers of different ministries, we have ratified before the Cacataigo indigenous leaders and the support uh, for their protection and also measures to protect them before illegal uh, crops in the area. We have established a regional table to protect human rights defenders made up by different regional national authorities with representatives of the UK uh, le indigenous leaders. We have implemented an articulated approach and we want to develop further efforts to guarantee the presence of the state where human rights defenders are in the first line um, and who require our defense and protection. The recent death of Julio Pasquale Manga in Paco department, we are deeply sorry about these events and this shows that we have to face great challenge. The response of the state is being strengthened within the intersectoral mechanism approach 
as the police has been able to identify four members of the community that had been wounded and in order to recover the corpses as well. We want to investigate these events and through the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights, we will provide the attention to the relatives of Lucio Pascual Manda within the framework of the uh, judicial investigation. We will later on inform uh, complementary measures and policies. I will now give the floor to Vice Ministry of Interculturality, Rosilda Imaraes. Thank you, Mr. Vice Minister. Good morning to everyone, to all everyone participating in this hearing. This morning, I will mention the uh, policies developed by the Ministry of Culture uh, for uh, the Peruvian Amazon uh, communities, taking into account the challenges uh, posed by the uh, petitioners of this hearing within the period of sessions, the Ministry of Culture in charge of uh, re indigenous communities informs the actions carried out during 2021 to deal with uh, indigenous uh, communities in the Peruvian Amazonia to guarantee their individual and collective rights. In that sense, we will mention five aspects. Implementation of the rights of indigenous uh, communities. The Ministry of Culture seeks to open spaces to channel their demands. In that sense, one of the spaces of participation created between the national government and indigenous communities is the multi-sectoral uh, commission that proposes, carries out a follow-up and implementation of measures and strategic policies for the in comprehensive development of the indigenous communities in my country, taking into account the decree that has been implemented. There are 11 sectors of the executive power and several organizations at the national level. The commission articulates its actions through technical work teams and spaces of cooperation in order to deal with the different themes that are part of the action plans. There are thematic group work groups in order to guarantee access to uh, health, also uh, economic development, access to bilingual cultural development, legal security of land and territory. And it's very important to point out that one of the main objectives of this group is to identify the gap between um, communities that are part of the indigenous communities, among which we, there is the articulation of actions within the framework of the intersectoral mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders in connection with uh, land issues. Regarding attention during the COVID-19 pandemic within the framework of decree 1489 that establishes actions for the protection of indigenous communities within the framework of the health um, emergency, there were five access to develop emergency um, policies to provide attention to communities and also provide early alert mechanisms and in, in the same in that vein, we carried out important activities to favor indigenous communities. In terms of territorial articulation, there is a work team to provide attention to indigenous communities with uh, cultural managers as well. And this team made up by professional provides technical support to indigenous communities in order to guarantee an intercultural approach in activities with private and public uh, bodies and also with intercultural sectors. Regarding 
the follow-up of the situation of persons that, who were wounded during the event that has been mentioned, the Ministry of Culture has um, been carried out an investigation in order to verify the referral of the persons that were wounded after the event that took place in Gran Bretagna in order to register the events that took place and also different coordination activities in order to provide psychological attention for the relatives of uh, wounded uh, patients. Also patients had been uh, referred to other uh, hospitals in order so that they can access medical attention. In November 23rd, I had the opportunity to meet with the uh, wives, the widows, in order to coordinate uh, joint actions to deal with their demise, highlighting the commitment to articulate with the other sectors, the vice ministry of the Ministry of Women, women also participated in the meeting. That's all I want to say. Thank you. I don't know if there's another state representative who would like to speak. Yes, thank you, Madam President, uh, commissioners, and representatives from the indigenous peoples. I would like to introduce, to speak about the measures of protection for um, environment defenders. These measures are multi-sectoral, sub-national, and also international, and uh, have an accountability approach. They acknowledge rights at an international level, a regional level, so that um, states um, define accurate mechanisms. This is why I will develop all this now. I will elaborate on all of this. First of all, we should take into account that in the national policy for the environment, we have focused on environmental justice because, um, of course, this might affect um, goods and services and rights. And this new policy um, also uh, focuses on the strengthening of the mechanisms for environmental justice. This new policy for the government with the new administration focus on a priority that has to do with um, managing threats and dangers and risks for people and their environment. And this has to do with this multi-level multi approach I was talking about that aims at uh, providing a safe environment we can see the rise in environmental crimes most of them have to do with pollution and it occurs most usually in the amazon region that is why it is fundamental to generate information we are doing this through inform informative newsletters as well as defining the focus for the uh, greatest threats loreto and others uh, they are the places that see most of the damage. Now, the intersectorial mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders has uh, deals with a set of uh, rights defenders and environmental defenders are part of that. This is fundamental because in this land, there are different kinds of um, rights violations. This was created in April this year it was boosted and before that in march we created the um functional unit for environmental crimes that aims at prevention to fight uh environment rights violations with the human rights approach and most especially it tries to work with uh civil society organization and defendants, defenders. We 
are working with a satellite uh, system because many a time in the areas where this occurs, uh, the areas are too remote, uh, so it's easier to control them in this way. Additionally, we have approved recently a protocol for the protection of environment defenders, and we have um, implemented this mechanism, which has three kinds of measures, preventive measures that have to do with information on the situation of environment defenders, and identifying a risk situation, then measures of recognition and measures of protection that have to do with the national system for environment control. And it has to do with environmental crimes. The president of OEFA will uh, explain this. And also measures of urgent protection, especially through the uh, National Service for Protected Natural Areas that boosts uh, logistical support to the national police to protect these defenders who are in risky zones or areas. We have, these are the entities that work on our programs and also the forest preservation program. You can see all the organizations on the left side and they try to work in an articulated manner to execute measures of protection and prevention. And of course, they also aim at raising awareness on uh, its capacities. These are the functions that have to do with technical assistance, with coordination with the Ministry of Justice, coordination on the measures that are adopted, then a report on the situation of environmental, uh, environment defenders, and then a follow-up on the measures. This report will come out in 2022 according to the plan. And we have also created at a high level commission for the prevention of environmental crimes, a permanent commission it's presided by the Minister for the Environment. And the idea is to generate policies for the environment. These are some of our interventions. They have to do with uh, threats that were identified against the authorities of the Quechua community, attacks and threats against the uh, Shiriarin community the death of indigenous leader Lucio Pascual, threats to the representatives of the um, committee for the uh, Tambopata Reserve, then a case presented by the indigenous court, and then training programs for state officials and also for civil society organizations and indigenous groups. We have also in being, we have also taken part of a dialogue table for the protection of human rights defenders uh, in Ucayali, which has the participation of regional indigenous organizations. This will allow us to focus our efforts in addressing the structural causes, which are drug trafficking, and then recently, for example, through this service, we located four missing leaders, and that allowed us to bring peace of mind to these persons and their family members. And uh, we are still investigating the death of the um, indigenous leader. Now, the future actions, drafting this first report, publishing quick guidelines on early alerts for, hum for uh, environmental defenders, then creating a geographic system on risk maps, strengthening the regional tables for the protection of environmental defenders. Also, the uh, national award, Arbol de la Quina, to environmental defenders, and the development of the capabilities of uh, defenders and officials. 
And if you would like to see more information, you can see uh, these links where you will find all the policies and mechanisms I have just presented. Thank you. Thank you. State representatives. Oh, sorry. Your times, you're not done yet. Is, is time's up? The president of UEFA. Okay, go ahead. President of UEFA. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to thank you, thank the community for this hearing uh, in order to deal with the human rights situation of indigenous peoples in the Amazon. I am the president of the organization that uh, controls uh, environmental crimes. First of all, I would like to say that this is a technical organization that is part of the Ministry for the Environment and oversees and sanctions environmental affairs, as is the case of those who work in hydrocarbon extraction. Now, as part of the framework for the protection of environmental defenders, our organization monitors the situation, considering uh, the situations that affect the environment or that might violate the rights of defenders. And it also oversees compliance by the EFAs. Now, with regards to the spillage that took place, we have, uh, we have presented nine uh, actions of investigation and have decided that Petro Peru was at fault because it did not take immediate action to uh, do damage control and it did not clean and decontaminate the soil. The following mes measures were ordered. First, the cleaning and deep contamination of the water, a measure that has not been complied with, the comprehensive maintenance of the entire duct, and finally, uh, the drafting of a social action plan in order to um, assist the communities. These measures have not been complied with. That is why during 22, our organization will continue to follow up on this to ensure they comply with this. Now, with regards to spill the spillage that took place on um, the North Peru, North Peruvian duct, we had the organization identified nine points of the duct where the TPH concentration uh, exceeded the uh, safe uh, level. And it also pronounced that Petro Peru was at fault. One of the measures that were ordered had to do with um, monitoring the uh, region. And the second one is strengthening a plan for communication with the uh, native communities about the cleaning and decontamination actions the company will be implementing. This has not been complied with, so fines have been imposed. During 22, OEFA will continue to follow up on these measures and will um, schedule new uh, overseeing activities. Now, with regards to mining, Follow-up actions have been carried out on the uh, government of Madre Dios. And in 2022, we will continue to oversee the follow-up. And if they do not comply with their obligations, we will communicate the uh, bodies that control it so that it will uh, act upon this. Finally, with regards to the demands of basic of access to basic services, OEFA controls the compliance of social commitments that are part of uh, the our regulations. 
I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to interrupt you because uh, we've given you five extra minutes because you've run over the time, the allotted time for five minutes. So uh, within that framework, there are no commitments that uh, with regards to basic services, but the company does have a program for uh, local contributions that aims at uh, contributing to the uh, health and education of the region with uh, different investments and collaborations. There's, uh, we are overseeing if they have complied with this. That is all, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. When I give you back the floor, we're going to have to adjust the time because the state took extra an extra six minutes the civil society took an extra three minutes, so we're going to try to compensate this to the civil society. I will take time from me and my colleagues so we can listen to the civil society organizations because that is very important. Now I will give the floor to Mr. Jan Jarab, the representative of the um, human rights, the Commissioner for Human Rights for seven minutes. Dear President of the Inter-American Commission, Commissioners, defenders, representatives of the Peruvian state. Good morning, everyone. I see also uh, indigenous leaders. We have been meeting with, uh, and also representatives from the Peruvian state, our office has been collaborating with. So it's a great honor to be with you all here. As the petitioners have mentioned in the complex situation of the country and the um, health emergency have posed several challenges for the protection of indigenous groups. The health crisis has exacerbated the structural inequalities. For example, during the first months of the pandemic, the communities did not have information and the pandemic has led to cult irreparable cultural and human losses as the death of indigenous leaders and the um, measures for social distancing and lockdowns did suspend several religious activities. Over a million indigenous children have lost two years of bilingual education because of a lack of connectivity and the lack of devices. Now, with regards to the pandemic, the uh, indigenous organizations have been adopting community systems the government has included in its plans and in uh, participative spaces, they have included the regional um, indigenous groups, but uh, several geographic and cultural barriers are, continue to be an obstacle for their participation. Before the pandemic, Michel Fort, who was the special rapporteur, said that defenders of environmental rights and indigenous peoples were uh, are at a particular risk and um, expressed how dangerous extractive industries are if they are not managed in a correct manner and, and also illicit activities such as illegal uh, logging and drug trafficking. And in the past two years, more defenders have been physically attacked. Some of them were even murdered and they have suffered criminalization, harassment and arbitrary use of public force. The indigenous peoples of the Amazon still face other um, issues like the uh, lack of protection from the state. For them and for their lands, a uh, lack of prior consultation and the lack of preparation for the pollution of the environment. We have identified um, willingness of the Peruvian authorities to strengthen the protection of defenders as several protocols that were recently approved show, but we have also seen the um, practical limits of these efforts. Recently, I visited several indigenous leaders who told me how frustrated they were because of the continuous threats on their land, in particular by drug trafficking and also the impunity that continues to be generalized. 
the death of several leaders during the past few months has damaged the social uh, fabric and urges us to prevent similar cases from occurring. So the investigations need to uh, advance. Also investigations on uh, environmental crimes and threats. And a year after the violent repression of Loreto, the family members of those injured and those who died call for an investigation to identify everyone who was responsible for it. Measures of protection in favor of indigenous peoples need to have the due participation and differentiated and intercultural approach. They need to consider indigenous institutions to favor their ability to control their own lands following their own traditions. They need to be designed in such a way that they won't be a hurdle to uh, their activities. And reparation is of the essence. Another uh, protection measure that is necessary is to solve territorial issues that have to do with sanitation, georeferenciation, georeferen and uh, environmental compensation. Now, in the process of recovery, uh, social economic recovery, the natural resources of the Amazon seem very attractive, but the promotion of uh, business activities should not be uh, um, at the detriment of the activities of indigenous peoples. Some consider that their protests are obstacles for development, but our office believes that the legitimate demands of indigenous peoples help to a sustainable, equitable development. Finally, I would like to congratulate the work of the indigenous groups because our office is always paying attention to it. And of course, we would love to cooperate with the Peruvian authorities to strengthen the mechanisms for the protection of you of uh, human rights defenders and the protection of indigenous peoples in the Amazon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. I will now give the floor to my colleagues, members of the commission. I will ask uh, you to uh, self-censor yourselves as we have only 10 minutes so that civil society organizations can uh, take the floor and the state as well. First, I will give the floor to the country reporter, to Commissioner Estorado Thank you, Madam President. Good morning to everyone, to all the representatives of civil society organizations and the different authorities and officials that are representing the state. I would like to react with solidarity and express my condolences because of the death of several um, community leaders. And I see that there is a very risky and dramatic situation of uncertainty, of lack of legal certainty in some territories and a situation of risk, unfortunately, for human rights defenders that are part of indigenous communities. I have taken down notes of the effort the state has been doing as the regional roundtable and as the person in charge of the Ministry of Culture pointed out, a commission that is aimed at coordinating a series of actions, access to health, education, and security in terms of land in order to close the existing gap in terms of uh, land tenure. I consider that further participation and communication is required for the implementation of the regional roundtable and the commission in order to establish lines of action 
urgently take into account the situation of indigenous communities. And my question to the state is, within this commission that you have described, is there a roadmap that is to say a, a schedule of meetings or priorities that have been established with the members of the communities? That is my question. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Rolon. I will now give the floor to Commissioner uh, Joel Hernandez, who is the Rapporteur for Human Rights Defenders. Thank you, Madam President. I could like to start by acknowledging the Peruvian state for uh, taking states to establish a policy uh, to protect human rights defenders. We need to highlight the protocol uh, established in 2019 and the intersectoral mechanism. For this mechanism to be efficient, it is necessary for beneficiaries, but also human rights defenders that are at risk are fully aware of how they can access this intersectoral mechanism. So I think this is a great opportunity for you to share with us and with the organizations, the different actions that are being implemented to make this mechanism accessible for uh, defenders in uh, environmental defenders and defenders of the indigenous communities. And I also would like to urge the Peruvian state to ratify the Escazú agreement. We know that he has signed the agreement, but it is important that this commitment regarding the defense of human rights is translated in the ratification of this instrument. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Commissioner Esmeralda, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to read the representatives of the Peruvian state, the members of the civil society organizations. Thank you for all the information you have provided. This is an opportunity, these spaces, so that we can listen firsthand your demands, your concerns, and also, do you respond by the state so that they can try to find um, fluent communication, permanent dialogue with the beneficiaries of all these actions that are being promoted by the state? I just want to highlight two aspects which are key regarding the perspectives mentioned by the organizations. In terms of what they have requested, urgent response regarding the possibility to consume fish and water. So I would like to know if that is being considered, in fact, because what the, you have pointed out, they have pointed out that they are deeply concerned about the lack of information regarding food safety. And the other aspect has to do with fundamental rights what the organizations demand are fundamental rights for to guarantee the livelihood of their populations. I'm, I'm concerned about education of children. More than 1 million children have been affected by the lack of education that should be intercultural and I would like to know what is your response so that indigenous communities leaders have this information. That is all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. 
as reporter for indigenous peoples, I would like to make some comments and ask some questions. First of all, I would like to congratulate civil society organizations for your presentation. I know that you don't have much time, but I would like to say that many of the topics that were mentioned by you are part of the report presented by the Commission in the Panamazonia. All the indigenous communities in these regions have structural issues and that are shared by all the communities in the Panamazonia, uh, regardless of the state defense of indigenous land and third parties that are in these areas, the need for the state to respect prior and informed consultation, intercultural approach, the situation of uh, land defenders, uh, access to food safety, access to water. And Commissioner Smerla has also highlighted this. In that report, the commission makes a series of recommendations to the states. And as we have been discussing with the ad hoc executive secretary by Mercadia Pulido by WhatsApp, that roadmap undoubtedly uh, it has been mentioned in this report and it could be very important to listen to the state uh, to see how they consider these as recommendations. The report published by the commission makes this recommendation. It's very important to know how you can implement them and you can count on us to establish that roadmap and with the participation of the organizations present today and indigenous communities as well. It could, very, could be very important to listen to the state. It could be very important for you to provide an answer in this regard so that we can work jointly to establish a roadmap based on these recommendations. During the pandemic, the commission issued a series of recommendations regarding indigenous communities in the context of the pandemic highlighting, for example, uh, prior informed uh, consultation in the context of pandemic, access to health, priority uh, of these communities so that they can access vaccines, um, attention taken into account an intercultural approach. We have highlighted uh, the importance of consultation and also self-determination. We have highlighted and the importance of best practice, uh, the protocol of consultation, and we uh, request the Peruvian state and all states in the region, because it's very important to discuss these protocols with indigenous communities. One of the first hearings in which I participated four years ago uh, was about oil spills in Loreto, and four years later, this is still an issue. This is a structural problem, and many of the issues we have heard are structural issues. And I'm glad to listen to the information provided by the state, but this goes beyond uh, governments. And I ask all uh, state officials to find real spaces of, to reach agreements, to try to find spaces to allow fluent communication, we are talking about the structural problems for Peruvian indigenous communities. And the only way to solve this is to include indigenous communities in and have a constant dialogue with them. I also want to congratulate this uh, intersectoral mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders and the position highlighted by Joel Hernandez regarding the position of the Peruvian state, but this is still a structural issue and we should find um, spaces, common spaces. Loreto is one example, but there are many others. I think that the first hearings in which I participated in February 2018 in Colombia, this was an issue, access to water, access to uh, food for uh, Amazonian uh, communities and uh, how the environment is being affected is an issue. And human rights organizations can help uh, the state in order to find these spaces. 
beyond the recommendations, we would like to say that um, protection mechanisms should be implemented to deal with these structural issues that go beyond uh, governments that are structural problems of the states. I believe that Soledad, the special rapporteur, would like to take the floor. I would like you to be to be as brief as possible. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning to the state and the civil society that is present here. I'm going to be brief. I have many comments, but I would like to express my concern. The special rapporteurship is concerned about structural issues in Peru, and there are two precautionary measures in, granted by the commission, uh, one for Tres Islas Communities 2017 and Curinico and San Pedro in Loreto Communities, as the commissioner mentioned. And these are a priority for the commission and for my mandate. I have specific questions for the state and we are at your disposal in order to implement urgent and necessary measures. The Peruvian state has adopted a national plan regarding human rights. The special rapporteurship has contributed to that. And the state representative has um, mentioned the lack of compliance of some companies in terms of some measures what is the state doing, taking into account the lack of compliance of this company that has been recognized by the state, and which is affecting human rights? And also, and has been pointed out, a specific action plan is required regarding oil spills and, and contamination because of hazardous waste. Um, we are at your disposal to collaborate in that sense. Thank you, Soledad. There are 10 minutes left. I would like uh, patience to, to request patience to my colleagues. We have another hearing afterwards. I'd like to distribute the time in, in the best possible way. The state spoke for more than six minutes and the civil society organization spoke for three more minutes. So. I will give eight minutes to civil society organizations so that they can conclude your comments and then five more minutes to the state. I know that is not much time. I apologize for that, but we have another hearing after this one. And I would like to highlight that all the information that uh, you deem relevant, you can send it in written by email. I know that the time is scarce, but you can send that written information and at least you are able to start the dialogue and make this situation visible. So I will give the floor to civil society organizations for eight minutes. Thank you. Could you tell us the order? It's determined by you, not by us at the commission. You are the ones who should decide who is going to speak. It's part of the organization's decision. Okay. Good morning, Madam Commissioner. Good morning, everyone at the technical team. I'm Lily Calderon. Since the state hasn't really addressed uh, the um, issue of access to water, considering this is a serious issue that generates more poverty in the Amazon region, um, the indigenous communities have not discussed yet how the state has acted. I would like to mention some reports in this case, uh, report number 002 from 2001 of the Ombudsman, Ombudsperson's Office with regards to water in Peru, which says that Peru still shows serious delays 
to get its entire population to have reliable systems for water. After listening to the states talking about uh, several programs and agreements with uh, indigenous organizations, states of emergency, and etc., the uh, office in this report says that these measures, in the case of water in particular, did not were not effective in uh, executing efficient measures. So there are operational deficiencies in the articulation of the work. Since uh, the human right to water is a fundamental right, is a condition for settlers to live in a decent manner, and uh, it's a basic condition for health and for other rights, we believe it's extremely important for the state to implement efficient and timely and necessary actions so that all these violations are finally addressed. And just to give you an example of the actions the state has implemented, the Morona is one of the regions, apart from the others, that has been stricken by the oil spillages. And in the technical report presented by the PNI, out of the 25 regions that are part of the program in uh, Peru, forms and uh, manners to access water, only in Morona, 72 uh, homes were connected to the uh, water network. So most of the population in the uh, in Loreto, most of the population in Loreto lacks access to this basic service. And the situation is even worse because of the constant oil spillages on the community's water sources who drink directly from these sources without any sort of treatment. So our agreement, sorry, our uh, organization would like to urge the state of Peru to implement urgent and necessary actions because there's a scarcity of uh, resources. The community has no access to sanitation resources. <clears throat> And if we consider the recommendations on the reports of the human rights situation of indigenous peoples in the Amazon, we would like to ratify that the Peruvian state needs to um, provide assistance to the population in terms of water uh, pollution. It needs to provide uh, programs for safe water analysis for the, uh, to study the damage and to study the impact of projects like the Amazon waterway, which affects most of the rivers in the Amazon. Thank you very much. Good morning. In representing IDESET, I would like to um, say what Jorge Perez was going to say. First of all, let's consider that in Peru, there have never been there has never been a consultation for a road project. That is why we we uh, request the suspension of the um, Bella Vista San Salvador road project, and we ask for the exhaustion of all possible measures with the government of Loreto so that it will abstain from giving to third parties the land that belongs to the community without its consent. There should be um, physical and legal sanitation of the land and the state should consider environmental impact studies for the area. Madam Vice Minister for Interculturality, please do something about this. We request the state to implement a table for dialogue on prior consultations for infrastructure. Also, we are requesting that in the case of environmental defenders, there should be 
a concrete action, not formal action, and a correct budget for the protection of defenders. And we also ask for a protocol uh, for the protection of indigenous communities by the Ministry of the Interior, considering that the defense of our territories is collective, not individual. These peoples have autonomy and a jurisdiction over our land. And that is seen in the cases of the deaths of indigenous on, on lot 95 in the midst of the pandemic. And no one has said anything about this here. The Ministry for the Interior is not here. There's no commitment to increase the budget to show just one ruling uh, making justice for the death of a leader. The Vice Minister for Justice and Human Rights needs to do his job. He needs to commit. We need a dialogue table. We need commitment. And finally, we request to uh, go back to the ratification of the Escasu Agreement. You want real commitment? When then you should do that. And I'm talking to the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry for the Environment, respecting the rights of the defenders of the Peruvian Amazon. And also we ask for the implementation of the 14 international standards on prior consultation. It's not enough to post them online. You need to implement them. And for that, the ministries for energy and the environment need not to oppose. And also, there should be a real and effective agreement so that the Peruvian state will consult when it's uh, working on projects located in or around indigenous lands because they directly affect the rights of indigenous peoples. We should also add that we hope you have heard us. Thank you for your time. I would like to thank the organizations, and now I will give the floor for five minutes to the state. Um, Dr. Mr. Daniel Jarez Pinoza, the coordinator of the uh, provincial prosecution's offices, will speak. Thank you, commissioners, representatives of the um, civil society, the indigenous peoples. I would like to greet everyone and first of all, express my condolences for the death of Lucio Pascual, an indigenous leader, and the deaths of William Lopez, Ijuma, Jemilton, Elix Ruiz, who also lost their lives on August 20th, 2020 in Gran Bretaña. as um, coordinator of the Public Prosecutions for Human Rights inter and Interculturality, I would like to affirm the commitment of uh, our office to our op international obligation, is in particular in terms of human rights, indigenous peoples and their defenders. We pay special attention to cases as the ones presented by the petitioners. We have led to uh, regrettable violations of their rights in the Loreto region, as occurred in Bretaña, Garachilo, where in August last year, three leaders, um, leaders lost their lives. Or uh, in Centro Arenal on the threats of leaders in the region. As it is known by the representatives and the petitioners on November 25th, the public prosecutor and other officials has attended a meeting with these organizations. We heard, we listened to you, sorry, and we committed to investigate these crimes as the, the case of the deaths in Retraña and also about how uh, these investigations should occur 
I would like to ensure you that we are investigating with the minimum standards required for these cases. We believe it is necessary to say that we are aware that we need to defend the rights of everyone, in particular of particularly vulnerable groups as human rights defenders and indigenous peoples. And we are strengthening the instruments to prevent uh, for prevention and to adopt measures that have to do with comprehensive reparation. We are um, wrapping up the drafting of a, a special protocol for the investigation of these crimes. On November 26th, uh, the national prosecutor issued a resolution that widens the jurisdiction to investigate cases against human rights defenders. This is being implemented right now. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to Mariano Caso. Thank you very much, Dr. Hera. I would like to focus, first of all, on saying that there are um, a set of lackings of uh, a lack of access to basic rights, which are a priority for public policies. We have focused on our presentation on mechanisms set to ensure these rights that are recognized and that have effective mechanisms. And I would like to underline that the report that was mentioned about water in Loreto, which we could elaborate on, is from February this year, and we have uh, explained our actions implemented after March this year, and other things that, of course, call for more budget and investment. Finally, I would like to say that the executive repeats its will to work on the ratification of the Escazú Agreement. We are working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other organizations to do this. And we would like to uh, reverse uh, the unfortunate decision we believe the ministry made. So we would like to insist on its ratification. In spite of that, we have presented this set of measures that we believe are an important advancement uh, that uh, will be in the measures adopted by Peru. Thank you. Thank you, state representatives, civil society representatives. I'm sorry for the lack of time. It usually happens in these hearings, but it was very important to listen to the indigenous organizations and also the state. I would like to insist on what we have said at this hearing about the need to implement these measures presented by the civil society organizations, I see willingness from the state. So it would be very important to keep on working with the mechanism for human rights defenders, uh, prior consultations in issues related to water access, which is something that was uh, strongly argued here. And we need more scientific studies of waters and rivers in the affected communities. It's something that I have seen since the beginning of my work at the commission. We believe it's very important that this issue is finally addressed. Addressed. These are structural issues, as I said, that go beyond administrations, but it's really important to have joint work and public policies with a human rights approach, in particular with an intercultural approach. And the only way to do that is through active participation and prior consultation. We would like to invite the state of Peru to keep on working along these lines and to uh, work on these issues. These are many, many issues that have been presented and they are all very serious and urgent. So we would like you to implement these measures. And of course, 
the uh, Inter-American Commission for Human Rights is always at your disposal if you need us. We can work with the civil society and the state on all of these issues. And finally, I am very glad to hear what the state mentioned about its uh, willingness to ratify the Escazú Agreement. We believe that's a very important signal and we hope that will happen very soon. Thank you once again uh, for attending this hearing. I would like to thank our colleagues, my colleagues, the indigenous uh, groups, the representatives of the state and Mr. Jan Jarab. Have a great day and we will continue to work on this. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.